Welcome, I'm Joe Ribello here at the Kenpo Gathering of the Eagles. And we're shooting a series of interviews talking with the various instructors, masters, grandmasters, and celebrities who have come to this incredible event. I'm here today with Eugene Sedanio, uh, in my opinion, a, a Kenpo legend in this country, uh, with an illustrious career and training with some of the top instructors, masters, and grandmasters in the martial arts, and specifically the arts of Kenpo. Again, Mr. Sedanio, thank you so much for, for taking the time out of your busy schedule to do this interview. Uh, the first question I always ask all my interviewees, uh, especially for this event, how did you begin in the martial arts? It was Hawaii, so most everybody did something. Uh, I just was lucky that, uh, that my, I started actually in Danzan Ru. My first teacher was a guy by the name of Raymond Yi, and uh, it was where we were living in Kalihi. They were teaching uh, in, in a little area we called a pavilion, so I walked over and started watching class. Actually started talking to this guy. He was sitting there with a brick in front of him. And I asked him, I said, you gonna, what are you gonna do with that? You gonna break it? He said, maybe. He said, do you have a quarter? I said, sure. So I pulled a quarter out. He grabbed my quarter, he put it on top of the brick. He broke the brick and then he, the quarter rolled and he grabbed it and said, okay, this is mine now. And that was my introduction to starting taking classes. Wow. Uh, for for our, our, our viewers, uh, uh, Danzen Ru, the uh, Sandalwood Mountain uh, uh, System of Jiu-Jitsu founded by uh, Seshiro uh, Okaza Henry Okazaki uh, in the Kodenkan in, uh, in, in Hawaii. And uh, Kalihi, Kalihi, let me tell you, if you've, got, if you've got a rough area of your town, if you've got one of the more dangerous places to go and live um, in Hawaii, uh, that's Kalihi. Um, my, uh, Ed Park is from Kalihi, yeah. Wally J, um, uh, uh, Charles Kalani, yeah. which many people know as Professor Cheru Tanaka, all from Kalihi. So, uh, so our, you, were, you were studying at Don's and Rue, uh, again, um, did you get to your black belt? Or how long no, no, I, I was in it for a, a few years and then we moved. Uh, we moved to a place called Palolo Valley and the town there is Kalihi, I mean not Kalihi, Kaimuki. And in Kaimuki is where a neighbor of mine uh, saw me practicing and said, hey, you, you do martial arts? And I said, a little bit, I was just learning. She said, you should come to our school. And I went, okay, let's go. And when I went to the school, that was Walter Godin's school. So he was teaching in Kali at, I mean, I keep saying Kali, Kaimuki, Kaimuki at the time. So I went over there and uh, went up and talked to him and he, he said, uh, I don't teach kids. So I said, okay, uh, but can I join anyway? He said, and he had separate classes for men and women. And he said, okay, but you have to bring your parents and they have to sit through a whole two hour class and then we'll ask them and see if you still want to join. I said, okay, and I got my mom, we went down there, we watched a whole two hour class and, and uh, you know, they were beating each other up and uh, it was a tough class. And at the end of the class, he called me over and, and he said, so do you still want to join? And he looked at my mom and my mom looked at me and I said, yeah. So we signed up. So that's how I started. So I was the only kid in his uh, adult class. Wow, and you were the first kid that Walter Godin ever taught. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, so, and I was, I was the only kid in the class. Every, at that time, he wasn't real big on teaching kids. He, he got into it later. He had a lot of kids and he liked teaching kids. But at that point, that was, around 64, 62. Uh, yeah, he wasn't that interested in teaching kids because he kept it rough in the class. Wow. But yeah, that's how I started, and that's how I started with Godin. For our viewers, again, uh, Walter Godin, a legend in the uh, uh, Hawaiian Kempo and uh, uh, Kaiju Kempo uh, lineage, again, a direct student of Joe Imperado, um, again, Sonny Nanoy's or Adriano Imperado's brother. Um, and also a person who was pro prolific and proficient in, in Hawaiian Kempo and at one point had been uh, uh, promoted by Professor Chow. And it's funny, I thought he had been promoted to 10th by Professor Chow and then I found out later that he actually didn't want to take it at that time. It was amazing. Yeah, but he still got promoted, he still had the certificate and uh, in Hawaii when you had a big promotion like that, they did it as a large event. So there was a lot of witnesses to him being promoted by Professor Chow. To, right. In Hawaii, Professor Chow and the other guys, if you were a professor, that was the top. In fact, once I asked Professor Chow, I said, so how does this go with the rank? How do you feel? And he said, well, 
you're a master maybe from fifth to you're about eight, and then at ninth you're a grandmaster, but then you can become a professor. So for him, he thought professor was the top. Yeah. Wow. And that explains a lot. You know, that story explains a lot of things, and specifically uh, dealing with Professor Nick Siri in Rhode Island. That explains to me why Professor was so prolific as far as the, the, the connotation of only him being a professor. Now I know why. Wow, that's a great story. Well, let's go back for a moment to, to Walter Godin. So how long were you training with, with, uh, with, with Walter Godin? I was with him uh, for about two years or so. And the reason for that is, again, I was a kid. So then our family moved to uh, Waianae. Ah, okay. And Waianae is another tough, I lived in all the hot spots, you know. Pololo Valley was a tough area. Kalihi Valley was a tough area. And then Waianae is a tough okay. area. Oh, yeah. And even, even the, the locals know, you don't always want to go to Waianae unless you know people over there. So we moved to Waianae. Uh, and I, that's when I started training with Brother Abe Kamahoahoa. Uh, and uh, he was my teacher. Now, at that time, in the mid-60s, he was Professor Chow's top active black belt. He was an eighth-degree black belt directly under Professor Chow. Wow. And so I was learning Professor Chow Kempo from him. And uh, Chow used to also come to Godin's school. Mm, right. So, you know, we got to train with Chow in his school. And then uh, when we, with Brother Abe, we were learning the direct style from him with, you know, visits and we'd go train with Professor Chow also. Uh, but Brother Abe was his top guy on the islands. Everybody knew who he was. Even Ed Parker, he's Ed Parker Sr. in Professor Chow's class. So, you know, he, later on when I was with Mr. Parker, you know, he would always ask about, yeah, and how's Brother Abe doing? You know, and, and Brother Abe had a speech impediment. So you had to be listen very carefully when he spoke because uh, it was a little bit hard to understand. But as students, as you know, you learn and you get used to it, so you can understand him very clearly. But I was with him all through the 60s, through my high school years, and got my uh, black belt from him in 70. Wow. Uh, and at the time, in that five-year time frame, is when uh, Professor Imperato was trying to get Brother Abe into Kaju Kembo under that lineage. So he used to come to our class, and we'd get trained by him uh, like three times a month. He was there teaching us in Brother Abe's class because he was trying to get Brother Abe to, to shift into the Kaju Kembo. Now, did he switch to Kaju Kembo? Did yes, he, he did. Yeah. He's on the Kaju Kembo family tree right. because at, at, finally at one point, it was right around 70 or thereafter, he, he agreed and came under the Kaju Kembo umbrella. So I always tell people, you know, you think uh, a testing board is hard when you go for a test. Um, do you know who Sita Sunshin is? Sita of course, Sun Kakenbo or Kakenbo or Kenkabo. Kenkabo. Kenka, Kenka. But he's all, he's El De Costco's instructor. Right. Yeah. So I used to train at SIDS also because Brother Abe's school, we, we were in a Lions Club is where we worked out. And then uh, just across the way, about two blocks in a, what we call a pavilion, it's an outside area that's covered, is where Sita Sunshin was teaching. So I used to train with Sid and Brother Abe. We'd go back and forth. They all knew each other. Well, for my blue belt test, the testing board was Sid Asuncion, Brother Abe Kamahoahoa, and Professor Imperato. So there are the three guys in front of me when I had to test for my blue belt. <laughs> so black belt tests were easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it can, it can, it can definitely pressure, wow. So after you were training with, with Brother Abe, you got your black belt with, with him. Mm -hmm. uh, with, uh, yeah, I know you're talking about your blue belt, but you got your black belt with him. How many years total were you, were you with him? Jeez, uh, over, a little over five, I think. Five years. And I, because I had trained with uh, Godin before that, I, when I went with Brother Abe, I wasn't a brand new brain. Right. But I still went through all the ranks and worked out with him and you know, learned all of Professor Chow's stuff at the time. And then another interesting hap thing happened while I was training with him, uh, a guy named Rick Alamany came from San Francisco to stay in Hawaii because he wanted to train, he was training with Sid Asuncion. So then I got to meet Rick Alamany and uh, started learning the Shaolin Kempo of Ralph Castro from him. And, and I liked it so much because the, the, the basics of the, 
the Shaolin Kempo is from Professor Chow. Yeah, Since we're Chow, doing right? Professor Chow stuff, the Shaolin Kempo stuff looked really uh, similar. Even some of the first techniques in the first forms, they're, they're like the basic stuff we always did. And uh, so I, I started gravitating to that and training with both, and then it became really good friends with Rick Alamine. He became my teacher uh, when I was in the military and I got to go to San Francisco. Then I studied with him wow. and earned a black belt from Rick. I actually got a black belt from Rick in 70 also. So I learned, uh, I was learning two different styles at the same time. So I got my black belt from uh, both of them in 70. Now, when you, when you came to the military, where were you stationed? Where were you? Uh, well, I was all over the place. But when I first went to the military, I was at uh, Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have an interesting background in the military, which I don't want to go into because it's not. Fair enough. It's not uh, the normal path of getting from one place sure. to the other. Sure, certainly. Well, so in regards to your martial arts, so your main instructor at that point became Rick Alamany. And um, were there any other instructors? I know you, you've always been associated in recent years with Sheldon Kenpo, with, with Ralph Castro. Um, did you go from training with, with Master Alamany to Ralph Castro directly? Yes, I was with, uh, with and Rick, you know, Ralph Castro is Rick's teacher. Right. So I was with uh, Rick for a long time teaching out of his school in San Francisco which is also where uh, you know, Great Grand Master Castro is. So, you know, we're at the, the same lineage. And at some point, uh, actually it was a little later on when I was promoted to seventh degree by my teacher, interesting story, in front of Mr. Castro. And then they looked at their bylaws and because my teacher was an eighth degree under him, that the bylaws said you could only promote to two ranks below. below. So uh, Grandmaster Castro uh, asked me about that, and he said, oh yeah, we just checked, and you know, Rick couldn't do that in the organization. Right. He could do it on his own, but not in his organization. So I, I said, oh, okay. I'll, and I took off my belt. I said, here, I'll take off my belt. You can have it back. And, and, he, uh, and I said, I'll send you the certificate, because uh, he had given me the certificate and signed it. And, uh, but I didn't have it with me, so I said, I'll give you back your certificate. And he went, no, no, that's fine. You go directly under me, so that officially you can keep the rank right. that your teacher just gave you. <laughs> so then I was, uh, I was training with him, but I was still with Rick. I never left Rick. Rick, Rick Alamany is my teacher, and, and Ralph Castro also trained me. So under, under Ralph Castro's organization, I'm a seventh degree black belt, uh, but you know, from being with my teacher, Rick Alamania, you know, I made it, a, he made me a, a ninth degree and, you know, over the years. Sure. Uh, well, speaking of which, um, you know, I, I've been following your career for years through the magazines, and uh, uh, I was very honored and privileged to first meet you at the original Gathering of Eagles in 1999 with uh, Great Grandmaster Castro, and uh, uh, it was an incredible experience because at that event, uh, Grandmaster Castro went over all the katas in Shaolin Kenpo from white to black belt. And that was amazing. I had never seen that where a person's entire form system was taught. Talk to me about the background on that and that whole event and uh, how, how, what it was like being there and, and doing something as extensive as that at the gathering. Yeah, that gathering was really interesting because that was the first one. And, you know, so a lot of us showed up. There's a lot of people there. You know, uh, Sijo Emperado was there, and I, I, was, I was there representing all my teachers at the time. And even when Great Grand Master Ralph Castro was teaching, I was in the seminar also, and, um, you know, helping out with what he was doing. Uh, you know, Alan Abad was there. I mean, well, everybody was. It was a who. Company. It literally was a who's who of Kempo systems. I mean, over fifteen hundred people attended the event, and it was phenomenal. And that's where I mean, I have to sit there and say, okay, this is my Kempo nerd moment because when I walked in and it was like, hi, I'm so Eugene Sedan. I was like, Eugene Sedan. I was like, you know, I was like a, a little kid in a candy store, and uh, to to be able to to watch these men go over these the, the different forms and actually see the, a complete cop syllabus of the entire system. It was just phenomenal. Actually, you didn't see the whole system from him because he has grading 
where you have to learn forms all the way up to ninth degree black belt. Wow. The Castro system is uh, is big, and there's every belt level has things you have to learn. So even if you're going for a sixth degree or a seventh degree, there's criteria you have to learn. So what he did there was up to black, right. and. Uh, that's a lot of information to begin with. Oh, you bet. And uh, you know, I, I'll tell you something about how uh, Grandmaster Ralph started putting his forms together. Be and it's true, in Hawaii when we trained, a lot of times we'd show up one night for class and uh, you know, uh, go in or, or whoever, whatever class I was in, and somebody would say, hey, you know, I was at a restaurant yesterday and I was sitting there and some guy threw a punch at me. And they said, well, what? What were you like? What were you doing? What were you eating? What did you have? Well, we're at a Chinese restaurant. So we're using chopsticks. He goes, "Okay, tonight we're working chopstick techniques," and we would get out a chair and a table, and then we'd, he'd show us. He'd grab chopsticks and say, "You grab them like this, and you got one this way and one this way." And the guy throws a punch. You, you know, you block and stick it through his arm or something. And so we would learn techniques just off the cuff. Right. And some nights you would just work on something, and you would may never see it again. So what would happen is we would see a technique we may not see for two years again. Mm -hmm. So what uh, Grandmaster Castro did, because he had the same issue with Professor Chow, all those guys would do that. Right. He started taking the techniques that he was learning and made his first forms. So when you're doing his first form, Mountain Meets River, you're actually doing an eight-man attack. And it's, all of these is based on techniques that you learned during class as a one-time deal. You've had an incredible career in the martial arts, and I really th appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. Uh, my, my final question today is, what brings you to the Gathering Eagle 2017? Well, I hadn't been to one since 1999. And, uh, you know, I remember how much fun it was and, and being with everybody and seeing, seeing a lot of people that I hadn't seen in a while. So this was the perfect opportunity to come, uh, bring my wife and that and visit with a lot of people in one place so I didn't have to travel all over the world to go reconnect with a lot of my old buddies. Wow, that's wonderful. And I'll tell you, I am, I am so ecstatic to, to meet you again. I'm, I'm really glad that we had the opportunity to, to do this interview and to educate you, the viewers and participants, in the 2017 Gathering of the Eagles. Again, Grandmaster Cedeno, thank you so much for your time. I greatly appreciate it. And we're gonna be back with more exciting action here at the 2017 Kenpo Gathering of Eagles. Yeah, thank, you, thank you, and stay tuned.